So uh, I know one guy who'll be in Seattle. He is the analyst for Sunday Night Football on NBC, working with Al Michaels, been doing it for several years now, has more Emmys than pretty much anyone in the business, and he joins us now. Chris, how many Emmys do you have, and where do you keep them? Uh, 15, and I, I keep them around the house. A few at my mom's house, uh, one at uh, an office that I work with here down in town, and uh, kind of let them hang out around the house a little bit. Have you ever lost one? You know, I went for a long time where I didn't have the, the name plates on them because I, you know, I, I you kind of you get them and you stick them up there and you don't even think about it. And then I had tried to go back and figure out, you know, then at some point in your life, it's kind of fun to go back and look at them. And I couldn't tell which one was for which year. And so I cleaned that up a little bit. But, um, yeah, that's a way to go. It just embarrassed me right off the bat. Out of boy here. I'm stumbling already. Don't even know which way to go with this conversation. We should all be so embarrassed about having 15 <laughs> Emmys. Um, but so what's the deal? We're having three glasses of wine before we take off to go to Seattle. Is is that right? That's what that's what I do when I have to fly. Just because it you know it keeps me from running off of the plane. Do you have any any advice or any tricks for the long flight to Seattle? Well, the Madden cruiser's available. You could you know do that whole thing yeah but you know what i've done the bus thing i did that to dallas and i'd rather fear for my life for two hours as opposed to 20 <laughs> hours so i don't know how he, i don't know how he did it all those years but uh, i don't know either I, I always thought that that thing should be at the smithsonian institute though it probably will be one you know, of these I mean, days really, i mean how many people would love to go on the madden cruiser and just go walking through that thing and, and have a few laughs i think they would love it well tonight no madden cruiser in washington browns at at uh, Redskins, and what do you look for when you watch that or any preseason game? You know, I'm like everybody else. I want to see Johnny Manziel play. I think this has kind of been a little bit over the top with uh, all the things that uh, I guess we expect out of that young man. I, I can remember being 22, 23 years old and playing in the National Football League and having a dang good time. You know, I was in Las Vegas. I was... If Justin Bieber would have invited me to his house, I would have been right there too. Uh, I, I don't. I guess I don't really get all the scrutiny. You know, Joe Namath did okay with with um, living a, a lifestyle, and and uh, I guess it's just a different day and age. You know, we thank God we didn't have the cell phones and all the cameras and and all the things, which has really sort of become the de facto police department, I guess, for the National Football League anymore, and for for parents and for everybody else, but we just know more about these guys than we ever have. But believe me, you know, back in the day, guys were out running around having a good time, and they're young and have money for the first time. I guess that's not the case in, in Johnny's situation. But, um, you know, I, I just want to see him play football. And what I've seen from him on the football field so far this year, uh, it's pretty impressive. He actually throws the ball better after I studied him uh, on his college tapes I, I sort of thought – I didn't know if he really had that arm to, to really make it in the NFL. But after watching the other day and studying that tape a little bit, I, I, I think he does. I, I think he has a little magic to him. So I, I'm anxious to see it again. He's Chris Collinsworth with NBC's Sunday Night Football. Now, it's one thing to throw. It's another thing to run. Any concerns about Johnny Manziel and his running style, specifically a tendency that he showed in that preseason opener to dive head first? No. As a matter of fact, if you know what you're doing when you're you're diving head first, I, I think that in some ways it's actually safer. Um, you know, when I was playing, it was called splitting the defenders, or um, you know, as long as you can kind of turn your shoulders and slip past people and, and get on the ground. Now we've seen a lot of quarterbacks fumble the ball uh, doing that, so maybe that's a, a little bit of a concern when you're you're diving head first, but. You know, this is a guy's a baseball player, a little bit like Russell Wilson. He has, he knows how to slide. He knows how to get down. He knows how to how to uh, protect himself a little bit. And um, you know, I, I don't think that uh, Johnny has elite speed to play in this league to get away from people. Uh, but I do think he has elite uh, quickness, you know, and, and that sort of buying time and and putting added pressure on the defense is really coming very much in vogue. Uh, if you watch Russell Wilson at all last year, yeah, he has a good arm. Yes, he's a very intelligent young man, makes good decisions out there. 
But his ability to uh, sort of buy some time, escape, uh, and allow those receivers to work open beat a lot of teams last year. And, um, and, and I think Johnny Manziel has a little bit of that in him too. Talking to Chris Collinsworth of NBC's Sunday Night Football, what's your policy, if you have one, on rookie first-round quarterback, or really a rookie quarterback in any round? When do you like to see a guy on the field? Do you put him in the garage for a year? What, what's your procedure? I think that right now we're seeing, you know, a lot of these guys, Blake Bortles, Johnny Manziel, uh, Zach Mettenberger, a lot of those guys, <laughs> I really don't have a problem with playing them, you know, because for four years you kind of get them for free. Uh, you don't have to pay them uh, what you're paying some of the, the higher-end guys, and we're seeing some of these guys that can get out there and, and play and because of what you're paying them, now you've got more money to spend on the other guys on the team. So, you know, like San Francisco, like Seattle, uh, sometimes you can build a great team because you're not having to pay the quarterback as, as much. And, and now when you do have to pay the quarterback, like they did in uh, Baltimore, Atlanta, and Dallas, and San Francisco, sometimes it hurts the rest of the team a little bit. Talking to Chris Collinsworth of NBC Sunday Night Football, you mentioned the Seahawks defending Super Bowl champions. When do you make your pick on on whether they or anyone else is going to win the thing this year? Uh, I was about ready to, to make it the other night watching them play against San Diego <laughs> that game. They look pretty darn strong. Uh, and then you turn right around and you watch a little bit of Denver uh, in their game against San Francisco, and they look pretty strong. Um I've got a little a little football crush on the Philadelphia Eagles right now. I think that uh, in Chip Kelly's second year, you 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 have a situation where they kind of remind me a little bit of sort of the Dallas Cowboys back in Jimmy Johnson's uh, second or third year with a young team, young quarterback, star running back, uh, bring in Darren Sproles. Michael Kendricks on the defensive side, you know, some some young players that that look like they're going to grow into something. So I'm, I'm kind of liking them a little bit, but um, I, I usually won't make a pick until we get pretty late in the process because things change, you know, with the injuries and you know who knows who's actually going to be ready to take the field in week one. So I'll make something up at the end of the preseason. Wrapping up with Chris Collinsworth of NBC Sunday Night Football, there seems to be a level of physicality among the best teams in the NFC that maybe the best teams in the AFC can't quite match. Is there a team in the AFC that you look at and say they can match the physicality of a team like the Seahawks or the 49ers? Hmm, interesting question. Um, you know, I, I think if, if I, you know, Pittsburgh is always going to have a little bit of that uh, flair to them. This Ryan Chazier is a guy that I, 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 I honestly, I couldn't believe he made it to the middle of the first round, and he's been flashing a little bit of that uh, already in, in the preseason. Um, you know, Baltimore's always going to have a little bit of that. I think, you know, ten, if Kansas City gets all their guys healthy, they'll have a little bit of that. And the New York Jets have that, but I don't know that they're going to be uh, that tough. You know, the Buffalo Bills defensively, I thought their front seven was as good as anybody's a season ago, especially along that defensive line. And, and you know, Houston now with Jadavian Clowney. But I, I think the, the the statement that you make is relatively true, especially when we're talking about uh, that, that West division with Seattle and San Francisco and the Rams and, and even Arizona, you know, with the way they can play power football on the defensive line. So uh, I, I would tend to agree with what you just said. Well, great stuff. And we'll see you in Seattle when we – Get a chance to see that physical defense up close. Bring bring an Emmy along if you have any to spare, if you want to lose one for a week or two, and uh, I'll bring the red wine. That sounds like a plan. All right, thanks. Uh, there he is, Chris Collinsworth, NBC Sunday Night Football.